Hello everyone! This time I'm going to do something a little bit different. The other week I stumbled across a video on YouTube which showed a, an algebra problem that I thought was kind of interesting. Now I'm interested in a whole bunch of weird things, so you know, why not be, why not algebra? So I uh, took a look at the problem. You know, like I paused the video before it gave the solution. It turns out the video didn't actually give a solution anyway, and I worked through it. Now I took a couple of false starts and made a couple of errors in the first couple of tries, and I got uh, results that didn't work. But I persevered, and eventually I uh, hit on a method that gave me the solution relatively easily with a minimal amount of algebra and so on. So the problem is this. Given an arithmetic sequence, of x plus y, x minus y, x times y, x divided by y, and so on, we need the value of the fifth term. So we have what is the value of the fifth term. Okay, so that looks scary. But it turns out that it's not nearly so scary as it first appears. So, first of all, what do we know? Based on the fourth term, we know that y is not equal to 0. That will be important later uh, because we'll have to reject uh, an invalid solution. Um, we also know by the definition of an arithmetic sequence that the difference between the first two terms, the, the, uh, the second and third terms, the third and fourth terms, fourth and fifth terms is all the same. Uh, we can do some uh, simple uh, checking here. Uh, we can just subtract the first two terms which is x minus y minus x plus y, which simplifies out to minus 2y. Now you can see that by simple inspection there, uh, but I made it explicit just so that it's clear where that comes from. So that means it from x plus y to x minus y, the diff the difference there, you know, you're going up by minus 2y. From x minus y to xy, you're going up by minus 2y. So this looks like a descending sequence, um, where it, go, it goes down by minus 2y each step. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to call this c for common difference. I'm going to call the fifth term z. You know, x, y, z. So that's fifth term. And that's equal to the fourth term, x over y minus 2y. Right? Good. We don't need that just yet. We'll need that 
when we need to calculate the final value for z. What we need to do beforehand is we need to figure out what x and y are. Now, we could, uh, there, there's a couple of ways we could proceed. We could set x over y minus xy equals minus 2y, and xy minus x minus, no, x minus y equal to minus 2y, and use those two equations somehow to solve for x and y. I tried that, and that turned out to be very complicated, and I ended up with a quadratic equation that I had to solve that wasn't particularly friendly. So, uh, now, I did come up with the correct value for, uh, I think it was y that I ended up solving for on that one. But I did come up with the correct value, and then I messed up when I solved for the other variable. Okay. Um, and that was a really long process, so I'm not going to go through that one here. The longer the process you go through, the more likely you are to make a simple error and the more cluttered your workspace gets. Instead, I thought I would uh, do something else. I, I can write xy and x divided by y in terms of the second term. So we know that xy equals x minus y minus 2y. That c there, that minus 2y, which is actually x minus 3y. Likewise, x divided by y is this, x minus 3y minus 2y. So that means x over y equals x minus 5y. Right? Good. Now, I don't like this denominator here. That's just going to make things nasty. So I'm going to multiply that through by y. So that gives us x equals xy minus 5y squared. Okay, excellent. Well, that gives us an interesting conundrum. We could solve this for x, or we could solve this for x, and plug, plug x into the other one, which we'll solve for y, and then we get our answer. Uh, but it turns out there's a faster way to do it. But first of all, I'm going to show you what this looks like solved for x. So that gives us x minus xy equals minus 5y squared, which gives us uh, this becomes x minus 1 times y, right? No, it becomes x times 1 minus y. You see, you've got to factor things the right way around. So this is x times 1 minus y, which means this becomes x equals minus 5y squared over 1 minus y. That's not exactly a friendly thing to deal with. But we could substitute this into, uh, say, the other equation, uh, xy equals 
x minus 3y and solve for y, but we'll end up with some pretty ugly stuff going on there. So we don't really want to be doing that. Oh yes, and this also has the implication that y is not equal to 1. Uh, just in case you're wondering about that. So looking at that, I don't like working with this minus 5y squared term here. So I want to do something nicer. Now, so I observing these two equations, this one and this one up here, I see I have a single x in this one and a single x in this one. And I have an xy in this one and an xy in this one. And then I have exactly one other term with a y in it. Aha! We might be on to something here. What if we solve this one for xy? That means x, y, equals x plus 5y squared, right? Because we just add 5y squared to both sides. So far, so good. Now, here's the fun part. Now we set the 2 equal on xy gives us x minus 3y equals x plus 5y squared. The x is cancelled, so minus 3y is equal to 5y squared. Nice! Okay, we've got some y's here. Now, we could move the terms to one side, factor it, and come up with uh, y times uh, 5y plus 3, uh, and then find out that has two roots, y equals 0 and uh, whatever. But we know that y is not equal to 0, so we can just divide both sides by y. So that means minus 3 equals 5y, which means that y must be equal to minus 3 over 5. Good, we have y. Now we can solve for x. Oh, we could try just stuffing it into this equation. That doesn't look very friendly. Because then we have to square minus 3 fifths, and we have to subtract minus 3 fifths from, from uh, 1. But is that any better or worse than, say, substituting it into xy equals x minus 3y? Well, I don't know that it is. So now that I've calculated that, I might as well use it. So, let's substitute it in. So we have x equals minus 5 times minus 3 over 5 squared over 1 minus minus 3 over 5. Well, maybe that's not so scary. Let's work that out. So, minus 3 over 5 squared is 9 over 25. 9 over 25 times 5, we're going to divide the denominator by, by the 5, so 
that's going to give us 9 over 5, because we have a negative times a positive, it would be negative. So we have negative 9 over 5 for the numerator. Now, we need, we need a common denominator here, so 5 fifths minus 3 fifths will work, or minus minus 3 fifths. That gives us 8 fifths. Now, if we multiply by the reciprocal here, just to make it clear, we have minus 9 over 5 times 5 over 8. So it's pretty clear those 5's cancel, which gives us minus 9 over 8. Okay, so x... No, oh, don't lose the minus sign. X is minus 9 over 8. Well, what's left to do now? Well, we need to substitute in and collect Z. So we determine Z equals X over Y minus 2Y, right? Well, when we substitute in, we get z equals minus 9 over 8 over, and y is minus 3 over 5, minus 2 times minus 3 over 5. Right? Well, this is easy. That turns into plus 6 over 5. So we have plus... 6 over 5 here. This, again, we're multiplying by the reciprocal. So this gives us minus 9 over 8 times minus 5 over 3. And that's still equal to z. Right? So we can see that we can simplify here. 3 goes into the 9 here, so we can cancel that down. 3 turns into 1, 9 turns into 3. So that's 3 times 5 is 15 over 8 times 1, 8. And these are both negative, so it's positive when you multiply, plus 6 over 5. We get a common denominator here. Uh, of 40. Uh, we adjust these things. That turns into 75 over 40 plus 48 over 40. Um, because, you know, to get 40 here, you multiply by 5, so it's 5 15s. To get 40 here, you multiply by 8, so it's 8 6s. That gives us z equals 123 over 40. So that means the fifth term of that sequence is 123 over 40. Um, we know x and y now, so we could calculate the other terms. Uh, I'm not going to, but it's a good exercise to verify that your answer makes sense. Uh, if you calculate the four existing terms there, um, you can easily identify uh, that this does work. Note that this 6 over 5 or 48 over 40 is our common difference. And the x over y term is 75 over 40. So you can actually work backwards on that and come up with uh, the rest of them. Make sure that your difference actually works. I actually did that to verify that I hadn't screwed up yet again. And uh, that gave the... Uh, it gave a a consistent result. So, what do we learn from this particular problem? Well, 
What we learn is that uh, sometimes the obvious solution is not the easiest solution. Uh, the other thing is to find a solution to something like this, you have to assume that there is a solution that makes sense. So you, what you do is you start trying to solve the problem. As uh, one YouTube video put it, uh, strategies for solving problems. Well, do something is one of the strategies. Uh, another strategy is assume there's an answer. Uh, if you don't assume there's an answer, you won't find one. Uh, so, if there isn't an answer, and you assume there is one, when you get through all of this, you'll get something that's inconsistent, that doesn't make sense. So, that will, uh, that will be your answer, that there isn't an answer in that case. In this case, we came up with a single unique answer, which is quite nice, actually. Uh, so this looked really scary on the surface, uh, but knowing one thing, the definition of an arithmetic sequence is all that's actually needed to solve this. Now, uh, as an exercise for anyone who cares, try solving it by replacing x with this in one of these equations solved for y. And see what you end up with. Uh, you do end up with something that is solvable and you can in fact get the answer that way. So uh, if you ended up going down that path going, oh hey, I know what x is. It's five, minus 5y five squared over uh, 1 less y. Uh, okay. Uh, well, you could get the answer that way. Uh, and you, you could get the answer also by uh, just doing, say, x over y minus xy equals minus 2y and solving and xy minus x minus or plus y, I guess, uh, equals minus 2y. If you did that, you, you could uh, solve that for... Uh, for x or y and, and do the same thing. Uh, this, however, gives some nice tractable solutions. Uh, you notice that we didn't have result to scary quadratic formulas or anything like that, uh, which is actually uh, quite... Uh, quite nice. It's, uh, I think it's a fairly elegant solution. Um, so there you have it. Uh, there's uh, a math problem. Uh, <coughs> now if you're wondering uh, about the brown paper uh, maybe some of you watch Number File. Uh, if you don't, it's uh, and you're interested in the math stuff, it's well worth watching Number File. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the doobly doo for that. Uh, but uh, I thought about how am I going to display the uh, algebra. I looked into doing it on the computer and I thought, this is going to take bloody forever. And I, I realized that I didn't want to spend bloody forever making the, the uh, graphics on the video. And then I thought about, uh, well, I could easily write it out by hand. But what would I write it on? Aha! Number file uses brown paper. Okay. I wonder if I can get brown paper. So I'm looking. Yes, I can get brown paper. Um, I thought about using a different color paper, white or something like that, but I realized fairly quickly that... Uh, 
Brown is actually fairly ideal for this uh, because it's fairly neutral and it doesn't mess with the uh, auto focusing and things like that in my cheap ass uh, video camera. So there you go. So I think this works fairly well. Uh, I, I thought that was a great gimmick on number file and it works great because then whatever graphic I need for the video I can just draw it and uh, I can draw it looking like a, what any professor would draw on the board you know the good old arbitrary objects lopsided circles uh, unsquare squares and things like that well there you have it there's my first uh, math related uh, video. Uh, I think I'll do more of these uh, just on the off chance that people find them interesting. Um, if you have any ideas on uh, something you'd like to see me take on, uh, remember I'm not a mathematician so I'm likely to uh, uh, make a hash of anything hugely complicated but I can use the interwebs and look things up just like the next guy so um, nothing says I can't try a, to make a video on something. Uh, and, you know, if you have any ideas, uh, send me a, uh, a message, uh, you know, put a, put a comment on the video or, uh, or what have you, uh, private message me, whatever. Uh, I'm always looking for topics for these things. Uh, so if, even if you have something that's not math related you want me to talk about, uh, go for it. Uh, well, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching.